I'm going to show you how to do uh, something very useful to a PDF, and that is to embed a table of contents. I've got here the complete Songs Without Words by Felix Mendelssohn, and it's in one giant file of 154 pages, and um, it's difficult at this point to navigate. You could type in page numbers and uh, go there using the little field right here, or you could uh, I'm gonna press F9. By the way, I'm running Linux here, and this is the events PDF reader. Um, you could also look at the thumbnails, but uh, that's also not an ideal way to get around. Right now, if you look at your options, you've only got thumbnails, and these are uh, annotations and bookmarks. But when I'm finished here, we're going to have an index, and that will allow us to jump between one uh, piece and another. There are 48 separate pieces in this and I want to be able to go to any one at any time from the table of contents. So uh, the way it's going to work is the way I've done with this Well-Temper Clavier file, which is also 48 separate pieces in a single file. This one's got 126 pages. And when I press F9 here to get my alternate, uh, you know, my navigation things, I've got thumbnails, but I've already performed an embedded table of contents on this one. So I also have an index. And from there, I can jump to any of the ones I want. I want to jump to number 22 in B flat minor here. I'm going to jump to number the fugue for number 16 in G minor. As you can see, this makes a large, unwieldy PDF much more useful. So that's what I want to do with the Mendelssohn. So uh, let's get after it here. What you have to do uh, to achieve this is to update the PDF's metadata and you have to include code for every bookmark you want to add, or every table of contents entry. You have to do what they call a bookmark here. And each bookmark has four lines. Bookmark begin, bookmark title, bookmark level. That's either one or two normally. Uh, the bookmark title is just whatever text you want it to say for the bookmark. And then uh, finally, the bookmark page number. And uh, so, uh, first thing you have to do, though, is get the metadata out of the current uh, PDF. And you, to do that, um, using the PDF-TK toolkit, all of this stuff is done using PDF-TK uh, on Linux. Now, you can also do this on Windows, I understand. I've not tried this because I don't have a Windows laptop, but um, the PDF-TK documentation seems to suggest that you can do these things on Windows as well. And the command to get the metadata out of a file is, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to turn off my speech recognition here for at least a moment. It keeps doing things. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, you have to run the command pdftk followed by the file that you want to get the info from, and then the command dump underscore data. And uh, to do that in the file that I'm working on here, it's the Mendelssohn Leader Ona Vorta complete file. I'm just going to dump the data and you can see that it spits out a whole lot of stuff really really fast and it's really hard to get to. So I'm going to run it through a pager and that way we can see what's at the top of this. Pipe it through the less command and that will open it up in a pager. And this is the stuff that's at the top now. We can see the modification date, the creation date, the program used to create it, and so forth. What we're going to do is start putting bookmarks right under where it says number of pages 154 and before it says page media begin and all that. To do this, you need to save all of this stuff in a text file. And the uh, easiest way to do that is to simply redirect the previous command. Instead of having it go to the terminal, uh, use one of these greater than signs that will redirect it to a text file of your choice. Now I've already done this. and the text file is right here. It's the same thing we were just looking at, only it's saved in a text file where I can work on it. And right here, after number of pages, I'm going to clear a little space, and that is where we're going to start putting bookmarks. Now, it would be extremely tedious to have to type out 48 separate bookmarks, even if I have, uh, as I do right here, already a list of all of the things that are there. I could copy and paste like so, and then put bookmark level, uh, sorry, bookmark level one, bookmark page number, let's say page nine or whatever. This would be extremely tedious. And uh, 
I, maybe I'll back up for just one second and explain how I got this. I did not type all this out. I downloaded this score from IMSLP, the International Music Score Library Project. And on the download page, they have a list of all of the stuff that's in there. So I just copied and pasted this into a text file. And then, of course, each of the eight books itself has six pieces in it. And if you go to the individual pages, you can get those as well. Just copy and paste that in there. You do that for each of the eight books. Copy, paste, copy, paste, and so forth. And then this is what you have. Now, um, thankfully, it, it did it in such a way where it's very easy to distinguish the individual movements from the book names. For me, the book names are the Lieder ohne Werte, Opus 30, Opus 38, Opus 53, and so forth. Um, I also have a voice command that will that will do, if, if I don't have a whole lot of these to do, I will do just a voice command that I have set up. And we'll see if it actually works here. Sometimes it doesn't like it for you to turn off and on like that. But I have a voice command that when I speak it, it will take whatever text is selected and build a bookmark around it. Uh, let's, let's see if this works. If it doesn't, I will just abandon the attempt and uh, go on with what I was talking about. PDF bookmark. Let's see if it was the... Let's try one more time. PDF bookmark. Ah, forget it. Uh, okay, <laughs> I'm just going to turn this back off. Um, anyway, what it does is it, it copies that into the clipboard and builds a bookmark around it. But we're going to do regular expressions here. And um, it won't take hardly any time for us to get all of this stuff um, built as proper bookmarks. And to do that, we will do a search and replace. This is the Genie text editor that I'm using on Linux, and it is also available for Windows. So if you are a Windows user and would like to kind of follow along with what I'm doing here, then you can um, get the Genie text editor for free and install it, and the commands should be exactly the same. I'm going to search for the word leader at the beginning of a line. The caret symbol, mean in regular expressions, will match only this word if it appears at the beginning of a line. I'm going to replace it with the first part of the bookmark template uh, up to the leader part, like so. I'm going to get rid of this funny little character and place it with the character for a new line. That is a backslash followed by an N. And the bookmark title, and then I'm going to do backslash zero, which will replace, will actually put back into place whatever we found in that search. Okay, let's let's do that. And that should, for the first level table of contents, uh, take care of the first part of each bookmark. And it is done. We have uh, bookmark begin, uh, bookmark title, and it replaced uh, the word leader right back into place. And, uh, and now we're ready to build the rest of the bookmark for the first level table of contents. And I'm going to use what uh, the only thing that's consistent here, well, actually, Lieder ohne Werte is consistent, that whole line is, but I'm just going to match the opus number and um, use that as an anchor to fill in the rest of the bookmark. Uh, first, I want to um, put a space between opus and the number, though. Let me just do that real quick. Opus, and then a space. I'm going to uncheck regular expressions because I don't need to. Okay. Now let's recheck regular expressions, and we're going to find, what I'm going to look for is any place where the opus occurs, and uh, look for a space, and asterisk dollar sign will find everything from that moment up to the end of the line. And I'm going to replace it with itself, because I don't want to delete it. I want to use the backslash, sorry, backslash zero, followed by a new line. And then I'm going to go back to my bookmark template here. Let's get those things out of there. And uh, this is where we need the bookmark level and the bookmark page number. So I'm going to copy those things in there and fix it a little bit. We want bookmark level one and then a new line bookmark page number space new line and so that should build the rest of the bookmark for the top level table of contents and voila it's done
So each of the uh, um, Leader Unaberta book entries, the first level table of contents, is now finished. The only thing left to do would be to fill in the page numbers. And uh, that's this is one part that you can't really automate very easily, but uh, once you have done a lot of the heavy lifting with these regex things, then it, it doesn't take a whole lot of extra time to go through and, um, and just put the page numbers in there. So the next thing to do is build bookmarks around all of these individual movements of the books of uh, Lieder und Werther. So it's very easy because when I copied and pasted in there, every single one of them begins with four spaces. So I'm going to look for the beginning of the line, followed by one, two, three, four spaces, then dot asterisk to the end will match the entire rest of the line. And with that, we can build our bookmark. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to, let's go back to the bookmark template. What I need to put before that is these two things. Bookmark begin. Let's replace that thing with, oops, not an M, but an N. Bookmark title. And then the backslash zero will stick the title back in there. And then I want a new line followed by bookmark level, bookmark page number. And let's see, bookmark level this time is going to be level two because I want this to be a level two bookmark that's kind of collapsible. So bookmark level two, followed by a new line, bookmark page number, and a space and a new line. I think that will do it. Yeah, let's try. Ta-da, we're done. Look at that. Actually, not quite done. There's still some ugly bunch of spaces here. So I'm going to use another very simple regex of space, asterisk, space. We'll match any two or more spaces, and we'll replace that with one space. So we see here we got like five spaces between this and that that looks ugly so that will fix that and then i want to get rid of the blank lines which can match with uh, beginning of line caret end of line dollar sign new line and replace that with nothing in the whole document and there okay so now the basic structure of the bookmarks is in place and you see that didn't take awful long and uh, it's easy to do if you've got um, data to work with that is fairly structured. <coughs> so the only thing left to do is to put in the page numbers and then um, add this to the metadata file. To put in the page numbers, what I did for this one was to, let me close that out and make it a little bigger so you can see. I just uh, went through this index. The index is very handy because uh, it tells exactly what page each of the pieces is on page three, page six, page eight, and so forth. But you can't just put in page three, page six, and so forth on account of, uh, let's go down here to the first one. This is page three, but uh, look up here in the left-hand corner. Oops, that's page nine in the PDF file. And so that means there is an offset of six. So uh, what I do instead then is um, go through this whole thing and add six to every number. So page three will become page nine, page six is page 12, and so forth. And uh, that takes, I don't know, it seems like when I did this, maybe it took about eight or 10 minutes, but uh, I have already done it. And I have it in the Mendelssohn bookmarks file, and here it is. You can see each one of them now has all of the stuff it had before, plus a page number. And uh, what we do with that is select all, copy, Go back to this file here, and uh, remember the space I cleared out there? We're going to paste that right in there and uh, get rid of the empty lines. Go back up, make sure there weren't any more empty lines up here. I don't know if the empty lines matter or not, but something makes me think that I should get rid of them. Okay, so now the new metadata file with all of the bookmark information to create the table of contents is ready. Time to run the command. Now the command. <coughs> the, the general command for this kind of thing is the one on this line where you do pdftk followed by your input file name and then the new part then is update info utf8 y you don't have to do the utf8 part but I normally do because a lot of time I'm working with things that have foreign characters and if you don't use the utf8 then the characters will not come out properly so update underscore info underscore utf8 
and then you follow that with whatever you called your metadata file that you've been working on and then output followed by a new file name for the new file that will have the table of contents. Uh, PDFTK will not allow you to overwrite your input file. You have to give it a new name. Okay, so let's do it. Um, I'm going to do PDFTK Mendelssohn Leader Ono Verta Update Info UTF 8, and then it's Mendelssohn.info output. I'm not going to type this long title. I've, uh, I've saved the title that I want to use in here. And it hurts my wrist to type too, too much. That's why I use the voice commands all the time. So I'm just going to copy and paste the new name in there. So now when I hit this return, notice that uh, here is the working directory that I have here. Right now there's only one PDF in here, and it's the one that is my input file. After I run this command, a new PDF should be generated that has a table of contents. Let's run it. Done. Go back and looky there, there's another PDF. I'm going to open it up. And so far everything looks the same as it did before. Uh, but let's push F9. Still have thumbnails, but let's see if the magic happened. Oh, there's an index now, and there it is. Look at that. All of those bookmarks are now in there. I can go to Opus 30, I can go to the Agitato e con Fuoco movement, and I can go to this one. Anyone I want, instant access to it. How excellent is that? So that is how you can embed a table of contents from the command line on Linux. I, I hope this is possible on Moodle. If anybody knows how to do this, it would, uh, or, sorry, on Windows. <laughs> I've been doing Moodle videos lately, so it's kind of on my mind. If anybody knew how to do this on Windows and wanted to do another video to demonstrate, that would be super cool. But uh, that's it for now. Um, hope you enjoyed that. I will see you some other time.